morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be a review of all nine shades in the Catrice Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss Line. Welcome to everybody watching today, thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be a review of all the shades that were released in the Catrice Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss Line. In this video I'm going to be talking about all nine shades, but this was released in two batches, and one of these I already have a uh, review for over on the blog, but now that they have nine shades, I was like, I might as well do a video, so that's why we're doing this today. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I like to come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I deem myself a snow angel. If you would like to join the snow angel club, definitely click subscribe down below. So yes, nine shades in the Better Than Fake Lips volume gloss line by Catrice. I already mentioned leaving a link down below for the first five shades that were launched because those I already reviewed, but also the day this video goes live, I will be posting a uh, overview of the four new shades that were launched with like all the close-ups and the swatches. So if you don't want to hear all of my thoughts and you just want to see a swatch, check out the description box. I will also be leaving timestamps. So if you just want to hear my thoughts on one particular shade that you can, and if you're here for the full ride, then let's just get started. So there are nine shades here and the first batch consisted of like rosy pinks and like a shimmering like clear shade. And the second batch were like brown tote nudes, a berry and a shimmering light pink. So that's also the order in which we're gonna do this. We're just going to use the shade names to order the video. And anyone who's been following my, sh uh, my channel in the past year knows how much I love this. This is the shade 030 Lifting Nude. And ever since I've been, I've tried these, this has been my gloss of choice pretty much the entire year. I will be doing a, re uh, a video before the end of the year talking about my top 10 favorite lip glosses. And this is definitely a contender for that video for sure. So I love these. So let me chat to you about the formula a little bit first because the name Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss has people expecting these to be like a tingling lip plumper kind of product. That's not what these are. These are hydrating lip glosses. So they're very comfortable, very creamy texture. And the volume comes from the fact that these have a lot of shine. So if you were expecting these to have like one of those tingling sensations to make your lips look fuller, that's not what these does. They will show a little bit more fullness because of the texture these has, but it's more of a formula thing and there's no agent in there to plump up your lips and make them look bigger that way. So I hope that that makes that clear. Um, these are really comfortable on the lips. They are by far one of the best lip glosses I have tried, period. And if I had to give a comparison to a formula, then I feel these are most similar to something like the Tower 28 Milky Jelly Glosses, if you're familiar with those. I mean, I have mine right here because I'm trying to use it up. I've actually been, I've kicked this one to the curb in favor of this because I have to use it up before it expires and I can no longer use it. So yeah, this is in the shade Coconut and formula wise, this is very similar. So if you were looking for a drugstore dupe for the Tower 28, then check out these Catrice ones because I feel that they are very close indeed. So let's get to the first shade here. This is the shade 010 Maximum Glow. And Maximum Glow is just a clear gloss with a bit of sparkle to help with the reflective qualities. Uh, everything else here is a cream, save for one of those new shades that I call a sparkly pink, so we'll get to that in a minute. But these have no sparkle or anything like that. These don't feel gritty. And Maximum Glow is one that I already put it in an original review and I repurchased it for this video. The doe foot on these is really easy to apply and this is what that looks like. It's very inoffensive and with these I don't feel I have to like double dip. One swipe across my lips and this is what it does. Do I see any of that noticeable sparkle once it's on my lips? Not at all. This just looks very high shine, very comfortable, and it just, like, it's just a clear gloss. So you could top this over other lipsticks if you want to add more shine. It's one of those very versatile ones. This one, I feel, does have a bit of a 
like a scent. It's a bit of a citrusy kind of scent, so nothing too offensive. It's not very noticeable, but there is something there when you first open these. But for instance, this Lifting Nude shade, I've had that for a while and that has absolutely no scent at all. So with these, there is an initial hit of something, but it's not bothersome. It doesn't like make me go like, ooh, I never want to use this again. Doesn't smell like cookies. It has a very pleasant, just scent to mask probably some of the the ways that the product comes together, but there's an, it's not like overly fragranced, if that makes sense. So our second shade is Dazzling Apricot. Apricot. I never know how to say this. And this is just a very light peachy shade, which is with my naturally pigmented lips, it's never really going to work very well because this is just a touch too light. Um, it is pretty though, if you love peachy glosses. I mean, this is a bit lighter perhaps than coconut. Coconut is actually described as a mauve by Tower 28, but I've never, it's far too orange on me for it to be called a mauve. But yeah, this peachy shade I think is the closest that they do in that line if you were looking for that sort of thing. It's very creamy. And another thing that I love about these is that the doe food isn't overloaded with product. You don't get like whack, whacked on to your lips with a lot of product. You just have what I deem to be the perfect amount. And that's what Dazzling Apricot looks like. As you can see, it's a bit light. It does add color for sure. Um, and it kind of evens out my lip line. I, that's what I love about these so much is that the formula really fills in any lines in your lips and just makes them look so much fuller because of it. And that that's what I really feel this formula has going for it. Um, but I think you can see I'm wearing a very neutral look today, precisely because I'm trying all these different lipsticks on. But you can just see that it kind of like now makes my lips blend into my skin tone, which is not a good look for me. And then my favorite, Lifting Nude. Um, this is the darkest one from like the original lineup in terms of like a nude that can still work. It's a mauve. Um, and this is My Lips But Better. So one of the reasons why I love this, I hope you can tell from the way this looks on me, it's just my lips, but a bit more elevated, a bit more evened out. My lips look a little bit fuller. Uh, they're very hydrated, they're nourished. You could wear a lip balm, you could wear something like this. That's really how I feel about this formula. And it just looks really stunning. I can slap this on with any makeup look I do. And for how much I've used it, for some reason, I still cannot like see anywhere on this product. So maybe it just comes with, you know, enough, or maybe it's just the thicker formula this has that it doesn't like the Tower 28, like you can really see where, like where I'm at in using this. But with this, I can't tell, like it doesn't go see-through. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. But yeah, this is my favorite shade for a reason. It's exactly the undertone of what my lips have naturally going on. And I'm just enhancing it. And I love it. Now another great shade from the um, uh, uh, original lineup is 040 Volumizing Rose. So this is like a lighter pink, so if peach isn't your jam but you love your pinky glosses, then this can be really pretty too. For me, again, a touch too light as we'll see, but this is a really good like second spot from the original lineup. So let me pop this one on. And that's what Volumizing Rose looks like. As you can see, this is close to lifting nude for sure. I mean, I can still get away with this. It's not as light on me as the peachy shade is for sure. And again, I think a very pretty gloss if that's what you're looking for. Very nice, rich and creamy texture. I mean, these all have that same texture. No weird tingling sensations, just super comfortable lip product. So easy to reapply this throughout the day as well because you can slap this on without a mirror and it will be fine. So I love this. And then finally, 050 Plumping Pink. This is a bit of a brighter pick from the original lineup. The other ones are more nude than this. And this is just more that rosiness, which 
I don't always love. I feel I need to wear very particular makeup. I think it will be nice today because I'm not wearing much in terms of like other shades in my uh, in my uh, eye makeup, for instance. And I love bright pinks with like navy blue, so I think I'm wearing the right outfit to show off this shade and do it justice. Um, but this is just not my favorite because I feel it doesn't. It's not as universal as the other two I just showed you. And that's what plumping pink looks like in real life. I think the shades are washing it out just a little bit, but in real life you can definitely see it's pink and it's this rosy pink. And because it has a bit of a warmish undertone, I feel some of the cooler blue tones, I've got quite a bit of purpley blue running through my lips naturally, um, that's coming through this. And I never love it when lipstick shades do that for me or lip gloss shades. Um, so that's why this, it's pretty, I like it. It's just not something that is my go-to, but I think that if you love a brighter pink gloss, that this can be a really stunning one for you as well. I love, again, same lovely formula. And these, you know, they're glosses, so they're not gonna last a long time. I do feel you need to touch these up after every meal. And now for our final four shades that were launched this fall. The first shade they came out with was 060 Shining Champagne, and this is another shimmering one. So the other ones we've just seen, Four of those were creams and only one had shimmer. <clears throat> and this is the only remaining one with actual shimmer in it. It's like, I think I like this better than Maximum Glow just because there is a hint of something here. So it's kind of giving me um, like just like a classic gloss vibe where, you know, when I started getting into glosses, this was something I was definitely looking for. Um, so if you want to add that shine to a lipstick, I think this is a better option. So this is what, what's it called? Shining Champagne looks like 060. I think it looks like a clear gloss. It doesn't really do much. This again has a scent. The other, like the creamy ones we talked about didn't have any scents at all. And this smells like peppermint. Maximum Glow had like a zesty kind of scent to it. This is more minty, but again, not strong enough for it to like visibly plump the lips and do much of that. Like it doesn't tingle or anything. Um, but it's it's interesting to see that they've put scents in the shimmering ones and not in the colorful ones. I, I don't know. But this would be my pick for topping over lipsticks for sure. Another shade that I was hoping was going to be pretty for me, and I think it does, but I actually think it may be a bit too similar. Um, this is 070 Enhancing Ginger, and it's like the more warm-toned version of Lifting Nude. So if Lifting Nude is too cool-toned, too purple-blue heavy for you, then definitely try Enhancing Ginger, because I feel it's the warm-toned version. I'm not sure if, if I'm showing you this right. Um, the warm-toned version of Lifting Nude for sure. Do you just see that it just, again, it does enough for me, but it's not too offensive. Like if, like in terms of like a good nude, this is really good for me. It, again, it doesn't do much, but it just, it does just enough. Again, a little bit of shine, a little bit of hydration, making my lips look fuller because of that. And it goes with everything I could ever possibly wear. So that's why I think Enhancing Ginger is going to be like the second shade I keep around, even though it's too similar to Lifting Nude. So do I need this? No, but now that I have it, might as well attempt to use it up at some point. 080 is Boosting Brown. And this was one where I was like, that's not my shade, but I think brown eyes, darker brows, some deeper undertones as well going on in my hair color that it actually works for like that sepia monochrome moment. I'm also wearing like a taupey eyeshadow today, so I think it can actually work. So let me pop, pop this on. If you love brown gloss, I think this is a good one.
need I say more? Like, it's brown, it's warmer than what we've seen so far, but it's, it's very inoffensive, and I think that's again down to the formula of these, with some glosses, especially if they have color to them, it can just be a very big glob of color that you then need to spread out. But with these, just having the right amount on each with each applicator, like I, I love the doe foot that this has. There's not enough, not too much product on it, just enough for that one application. And I feel this goes really well too. I don't know about you, but I like the look of this. I definitely like the look of this. And finally, we have Fizzy Berry 090. And this, I thought I wasn't going to love, but when I swatched these new shades out for the first time, just to see what they would do, I didn't want to take it off because it's so pretty. This is another more cool toned, plummy berry, and it's stunning on. It is the most intense shade that we have today though. Now, if you want that vibrant, vibrant, more purpley shade, look no further. It's stunning. It's Max Rebel in lip gloss format. It's It's got the sheerness, but it's got the purpleiness, and it's got a bit of plum, and it's got a little bit of red running through it as well. But it does have this really nice cooler undertone, which is what I love. Again, I think this just works really well because I'm wearing a navy shirt today as well. So good job on picking the navy shirt today. Um, but yeah, this is stunning. I love this shade on. And I really feel that this, again, because I'm wearing something very basic on the eye, I need that pop of something extra to really make the look pull together. And for a gloss in such a dark shade to not travel anywhere, because as I already mentioned before filming this, I did wear this for an entire day. You can eat and drink and it will not end up on your nose or like bleed everywhere. For a shade that's this intense in a gloss formula, Catrice has really nailed it here. So yeah, those are all nine shades from the Catrice Better Than Fake Lips Volume Gloss line. I'll pop a picture up on the screen right now of what these shades look like in a swatch if you put them all together. I didn't swatch them live for you in the video because I'm too far away and since some of these are so similar, you wouldn't really able, be able to tell the difference. So I'll make sure to pop a picture up on the screen so that you can really scrutinize these differences in the different undertones. But I hope that seeing them go on my lips was also very very helpful for you as well. I think these are great. I think that in terms of gloss, this is one of the best glosses to have come to the market in recent years. And these are like, what, four euros at the drugstore? And these are really, really good. These do not feel like drugstore. These are high-end feeling lip glosses that you can wear as a lipstick. You can wear these by themselves or you can top them over things, wear them with a lip liner if you have something lying around, especially with a shade like this. Adding a bit of lip liner may be really, really cool to really play around with it because these do have a level of sheerness still to them, but they're opaque enough to really sort of fill in all the blanks and change the color of your lips. So I feel these are great. These are great, great drugstore lip glosses and not just because they're affordable, but because they actually compete with some of the higher end things I've got going on in my lipstick for uh, in my lip gloss collection. I mean, I love Charlotte Tilbury and I love some of the other things I've got going on, but these Catrice ones, they compete with high end and they are really, really great. So I would recommend to not sleep on these. I would highly recommend you buy one of these if you find these appealing and you're looking for a good gloss to have in your life. That's that's the way I would go about this. So thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope this review was useful for you. So please th thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week. So I hope you like to stay tuned for more. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.